So it finally happened to me. I had my first wedding client canceled on me this year. And then a few days later, my second client canceled on me. Now, basically I was in shock more than anything because the reason why the first client canceled was because their uh, fiance was diagnosed with breast cancer. Now, when I first saw that message, didn't really know how to react other than asking them if they wanted to postpone or what their thoughts were, you know, um, wasn't sure what they wanted to do. So basically I wanted to hear from them on how they wanted to proceed. Basically they just wanted to, you know, get their funds back, which I was more than happy to do. Uh, so there was no issues there, but long story short, basically I had them send me an email just so that I have things for my records, things for my notes, basically a paper trail. Um, and then that way, um, if anything were to come up, I have that for documentation. I sent the money back, everything was good. But then a few days ago, I saw that they got married. Uh, they did the whole ceremony thing. Not sure if they did the reception. They did book me for the ceremony, the reception and the photo booth. And that's basically how I kind of break down my services. Um, so starting off with package one, I typically would only do the reception and cocktail and dinner is where I would supply the music, sound and all that good stuff. And package two goes on to be uh, the ceremony would be included with that. So what I just mentioned, dinner, cocktail, reception, and sound for the ceremony. And they also booked for the photo booth. So, I mean, it was a pretty good gig for this one here. It sucked that I didn't get to do it. And seeing that they post that they did get married, um, wasn't sure what happened, but we follow each other on Instagram. I kind of wish that they would just have removed me as a follower. So I didn't have to see that, but it is what it is. And at the end of the day, I felt like I did the right thing. Now, my second client that hit me up wanted to cancel. I, <clears throat> uh, I knew them personally and I'm actually friends with one of them and their fiance. I actually went to school with them. Now, I don't know exactly what happened, but basically he reached out saying that the wedding will no longer happen and to reach out to um, you know, the, the, his partner to see what I can do to do a partial refund, because the way that I have things worked in my contract is to have a, a 90 day policy where if you were to cancel within those 90 days before your event, I would give you 50% of your refund back. But, um, before the 90 days, you'd be eligible for a full refund. And that's just ensure that for myself, I'm able to go and find other work so that I can kind of make up for that missed opportunity um, that was already presented to me, right? Um, so I feel like that was fair. Uh, so I reached out to their partner via text, phone call, voicemail, you know, haven't heard anything back. And uh, so maybe they just need some time to process everything, but I'm still waiting, you know, for a response to see how I can move forward with that. Now, if you're new to mobile DJing and you're thinking about getting into this, I'd recommend having some type of contract, some type of an agreement that you can send to your clients to basically kind of wash this all out so that they understand exactly what would happen if they were to cancel um, on you, especially if they already pay like a retainer fee or a deposit or anything like that. Um, so with that being said, just make sure you have all that basically documented um, and have your client sign. And if you need to, you know, have somebody, you know, with legal, um, you know, knowledge help you in this area. It's always nice to have all that stuff. Personally, I had ChatGBT kind of write me a draft and I went in there and kind of modified a few things. Um, but it's better to have something than nothing, especially if you're going to be in this business and you're making money from it, you definitely want to have some type of an agreement or contract that you can send to your potential clients. Not only will they respect you more, but they're going to see that you're a professional and that you have something in writing so that you guys can both agree on. The other thing that I'd like to do is I always um, let people know that if there's something that they see on the contract or the agreement that they're not okay with or they're not comfortable with, they're more than, um, I'm more than happy to work with them to come to an agreement and modify a few things, especially for the event. Now, the way that I like to kind of sell my services that is each event is pretty much unique on its own so if there's something that doesn't work for you we can go ahead and modify that and customize that and people love that is basically going to be fitted towards them because it's not like a cookie cutter process 
the logistic part, yes, it's going to be a lot of the same things, but you know, certain things where maybe it's a two day event versus a one day event, like those things are going to be a little bit different and you want to make sure that you can customize your service to your client's needs. And I guess my only tip for this one here is to do the right thing. Obviously, if somebody no longer wants your services, you should have something in place that you can still offer your clients to where they'll be satisfied. If you look at any big corporation, big company, you know, they're dealing with returns, refunds um, all the time. And they're always trying to find ways that they can still win over their customer base so that they can shop with them in the future. Now, within our industry, it's a little bit different because that customer that could return might not be for a while because they might hire you for like a birthday party or for something else, but maybe not for another wedding because typically people would only do that, you know, once in their life and that should be it. But sometimes people get remarried and might think of you and have you be their DJ again. Now I have yet to do one of those, but um, just know that this industry is a little bit different. You're not selling, you know, like a camera stand that people are going to continue to buy year after year and stuff like that. It's just something that you probably will do once for them in their lifetime, maybe twice, um, but they will refer you. So seeing that, you know, you have good customer service skills, um, you're professional, they're going to refer you to other people, to their friends and family. And that's what you're hoping for. So if you found any of that information useful, please go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment below if this is something that you have experienced before as a mobile DJ, or maybe you have some type of side business and make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And I guess until next time, peace.